This video was brought to you by our brand new channel, TLDR Business. Subscribe by clicking the link in the description. Before the current energy crisis really kicked off, nuclear power was fast going out of fashion. Thanks to a combination of high capital costs and a bad reputation with the public, who mostly associate it with Chernobyl or Fukushima, very few countries were actually building more nuclear reactors, and most were actually phasing theirs out. However, the recent energy crisis, which has been especially acute in Europe, thanks to the continent's previous dependence on Russian gas, has forced a sharp U-turn in thinking. And nuclear is definitely back in fashion. So in this video, we're going to try and do three things. Firstly, we're going to explain why the energy crisis has made governments realise that they need nuclear power plants. Secondly, we're going to look at the countries which have already U-turned. And, th and thirdly, we're going to ask whether with all of this new demand, there's actually going to be enough fuel, i.e. uranium, to go around. So let's start by explaining why nuclear power is back in fashion. As we explained in the intro, previously nuclear power wasn't going all that well. Most of the public associate it with nuclear disasters like Chernobyl and are worried about radiation, while environmental activists often see it as an environmentally inferior alternative to renewable technology. As such, countries like Germany and Japan, and even certain states in the US, all had plans to phase out their nuclear power plants. However, the rising cost of energy, and especially fossil fuels, has done two things. Firstly, it made governments desperate for any energy they can get their hands on, even if it comes from politically unpopular sources, like nuclear power. And secondly, it's made governments realise that the energy transition might be a bit harder than they once expected. One of the reasons that governments were so relaxed about shutting down nuclear power plants is that, for the last 20 years or so, and especially since 2014, energy has been remarkably cheap. This is in large part due to the US shale boom, which really started in 2010, and allowed, na and allowed natural gas supply to meet excess demand. And as such, despite rising demand from developing countries like China and India, natural gas prices have actually stayed steady and relatively low for most of the 2010s. Accordingly, governments just decided that they could use natural gas, which produces about half as many emissions per joule as coal, as a transition fuel while they moved over to renewables, and possibly even as a so-called baseload energy source in the future. Essentially, because renewables like wind and solar produce power intermittently, you either need lots of batteries, which with current technology would be very expensive, or you need a reliable baseload energy source to generate energy when the sun isn't shining and the wind isn't blowing. When gas prices were low, governments apparently assumed that gas could fill that role, either until the required battery technology became cheaper, or the emissions could be offset by another means, like carbon capture and storage. However, as natural gas prices have spiked, governments have realised this might not be such a good idea after all, and have realised that they might need some other low emission baseload energy source. And for the countries who can't do hydropower, this sort of leaves nuclear as the only real option. So that's why the current energy crisis has brought nuclear power back into fashion. On to the second part of the video. Which countries have actually turned over to nuclear already? Well, by our count, at least 20 countries have recently moved closer to nuclear. The UK, for instance, wants to build eight new nuclear reactors and has bought a £700 million stake in EDF Sizewell plant. France has extended the lifetime of five nuclear power plants and wants to build as many as 14 new reactors. Finland just finished construction of its first nuclear plant in March of this year while the Netherlands recently announced that they plan to build two new nuclear reactors. Poland, which currently has no nuclear power, now wants to build six reactors by 2040, and a group of Swiss lawmakers recently proposed reinvesting in Switzerland's nuclear technology too. Romania recently agreed to refurbish one of its reactors, and Slovakia currently has plans to build two new ones, as well as the Czech Republic recently announcing their plans to build a new reactor. 
Hungary have also recently granted licenses for the construction of two new nuclear power plants, while Russia wants to build 16 new nuclear plants by 2035. In the US, the California legislature voted to keep one of their nuclear power plants open, which had previously been planned to shut down. While in India, they've just announced nine new nuclear reactors. Bangladesh is currently in the process of building their first reactor. South Korea wants to build four more reactors by 2023 and extend the lifetime of 10 older units. And Japan wants to restart reactors closed after Fukushima, as well as building the next generation of reactors. China is also accelerating its already huge buildup while Egypt, the UAE, and Turkey are all building their first reactors at the moment. On top of this, the EU even recently decided to designate nuclear power as a sustainable green fuel source, making it eligible for 265 billion euros worth of EU Green New Deal funding, despite protestations from the five anti-nuclear European governments, Austria, Denmark, Germany, Luxembourg, and Portugal. Anyway, you get the idea then. Nuclear power is back in fashion, and that means a pretty dramatic turnaround, given that the total number of nuclear power plants worldwide has largely stagnated since the 90s. And given this new demand for nuclear power, the question arises, is there enough uranium to go around? And perhaps as importantly, where is it? Well, let's start with the first question, about whether there is enough uranium. Now, the first thing to say here is that there's a lot of uranium out there. The unit we're going to use here are TUs, where TU represents a ton of raw uranium. At the moment, the world gets through about 70,000 TUs a year, but only produces about 50 to 60,000 tons each year, with the deficit being made up by pre-existing stockpiles. Now, this might make it sound like we're slowly running out of uranium, but that's not actually the case. There's actually tons of uranium around. It's just currently quite difficult to extract. There's about 65 trillion TUs in the Earth's crust, which is being constantly replenished. And there's a further 4,000 million TUs in the Earth's seawater. In fact, according to the Nuclear Energy Agency's latest report from 2020, there's more than enough to go round. According to the report, meeting their so-called high-case scenario until 2040 would only require extracting about 28% of all commercially viable uranium. Here, we're defining commercially viable as uranium which can be mined for less than $130 per kilo, which seems fair given that uranium prices are currently only slightly below that at about $110 per euro. And ultimately, these extraction costs should come down as technology improves and breeder reactors, which recycle nuclear waste into even more energy, reduce total demand for uranium. So if we've got all this uranium, then where is it? Well, as things stand, most of the world's uranium is produced by four countries. Kazakhstan, Canada, Australia, and Namibia. Of these, Kazakhstan is by far the biggest producer, reliably accounting for more than 40% of the world's supply. However, this might change in the future, because while Kazakhstan can mass-produce uranium very quickly, Australia has by far and away the most commercially available reserves. All in all, while uranium production has its geopolitical risks, they're not insurmountable, and as tastes change to back towards nuclear power, Partly because of the crisis in Europe, it's not unlikely we'll begin seeing more being dug up than ever before. And if that's not enough TLDR for you, then a couple of weeks ago, we launched a brand new TLDR channel about business and how it interacts with politics, people, and society. And over there, we have five brand new videos. One where we discuss why Apple has more money than it wants, as well as a video on the ideology of Elon Musk and the secret economics of porn where we find out the two household names who control the whole industry. And there's more to come, so head over to the channel, check out those videos, and subscribe to TODR Business.